Hi everybody. I'm here to share a little tutorial with you on a cute little cupcake. Let me get the tools you'll need. I use a uh, marver. This is a stump shaper. Uh, I have a kitchen knife. I have a paint scraper. You can use an exacto knife if you want a I don't like the result that just a sharp knife gives. I really like the sharp edge that the razor part of an X-Acto knife or a paint scraper gives you. I also use this little nut tool. Um, I think it's used to scoop the meat out of a nutshell. Um, I really like this angled curve here, but you don't have to find one of those. If you don't have one, you can use the side of a mandrel uh, depending on the size bead you're making that will determine what size mandrel you use to do this specific move that I make with this tool. The glass you'll choose depending on how you want to decorate the top of your cupcake you might want to put sprinkles on it so you'd need different colored stringers. If you wanted to put a little flower on the top you could use a white stringer or an encased stringer if you want to get fancy with your flowers. If you want to put um, a cherry on the top, you'd need to have a, a thinner rod of red or a fat stringer of red. Let's see. Let me get this torch lighted. Lighted? Lit. <laughs> Sorry. But I'll give you a couple options when we're all done. I'll show you some pictures of some different options and give you a couple tricks during the process. Hopefully it'll get your creative juices flowing. So you know you have to heat your, I just dipped this bead release so it's dark gray. So whenever you have your uh, damp or not quite dry bead release, I'm not sure you'll see it with this filter on the camera. But you'll see where it's wet, it's really dark gray. So I'm just gonna hold it above the flame. And maybe you can see that dark gray turning to a light gray. So once you've got the wet bead release to a light gray, then you can hold it in the flame until it glows. And I like to go from left to right while I'm rotating. So that way the entire surface of the bead release is heated. And then we're going to first do the paper part of the cupcake. So I'm just going to make my paper part green. And my bead warmer uh, just bit the dust recently, so you'll have to excuse this little bit of extra time it takes to get the glass started. So you want to heat up a normal gather. If you're a real beginner, it'll take a little practice for you to figure out how much, if you, uh, how much glass you want to heat or how large the gather wants to be or you want it to be. So I don't want to make a ginormous cupcake unless you were going to make a pendant. If you were going to make, try and make matching to do earrings, um, you would do a little smaller. So I'm just going left of center. So here's the center of the mandrel and I'm gonna put the green just to the left of center because it's gonna be, because I'm right-handed, it's going to be the paper part of the cupcake. The top, the cake part, oops, the cake part. Oh, now look, here's a perfect example of how I messed up. Can you see the bead release on the end there glowing? Yeah, sorry about that. Use it as a lesson, so you just pinch it off. And I have another tutorial about what to do with those little pinched off pieces, but we can go over that later. So, back to the paper part. I'm just going to put this gather down just left of center of where the bead release is on the mandrel. I'm going to roll the mandrel away from me, which pulls the glass from the rod. Then I'm going to use 
gravity and heat to make that bead round. You can tell the holes in the center if when you turn that bead quickly, the top of the bead remains in the same position. In other words, the top of the bead's not going like this. So first thing I wanna do is heat. I wanna, I wanna let, let it just be a bead first. Just let it be a nice round bead with a hole in the center. And then you're going to heat it a little bit. Get your marver and just flatten it a little bit to make it just a little bit barrel shaped. And you'll do better if you make the whole length of the bead go in one swipe instead of making little choppy movements. You, you have a tendency to get flat areas when you don't cover the entire surface. So now you can see it's a barrel shape. Now I'm gonna angle my marver and make it more angled so that I get that cupcake shape. So it's narrower on the left and fatter on the right. That's what it looks like from the top. I'm gonna put some dots on this and because, let's see, I've got white on my table. Um, because I wanna put orange dots, I like to put down a white dot first. So I'm gonna put the first dot right here on the bottom, just a small bit. If that's a little too much, you can always take some off. Then I'm gonna turn the bead towards me so that first dot is pointing at me so I can see it. Then I'm gonna put the next dot right on top. So you don't wanna put a dot and then turn it away from you to put the next dot because you've lost sight of that first dot. So I put the first dot down, just a tiny dot. Second one, still turning towards me so I see the previous dot and where I'm gonna put the next dot. So that'll give you a better chance of having them more evenly spaced. And I'm going to come in between those first dots and put the next row. And then the third row. And I'm turning it away from me now because I can see where these first dots have been so I know where to go for the next one. And I think I'm going to put orange dot on top of the white ones. The, the orange is going to show up a lot better on that green base having the white put on there first. So if you need to reshape your bead, you just go right back in, keep the shape you need. So I'm gonna heat the orange and put just a little dot on top of the white dot. It'll show up much better, much brighter. So I'm just heating the rod of orange in the flame. I'm keeping the bead close to the flame, but not in the flame. So it's not getting cold. So these dots are a little wonky, but this is a, this is a very forgiving bead. It's still gonna look like a cupcake. Just slowly melting these in. You don't want to melt them in too quickly or they'll spread really big. Just shaping again. So I've got my, sort of like a Hershey's Kiss, if you can see that shape. So now I'm gonna get my either X-Acto knife or razor blade, and I'm going to make slices in the cupcake paper, just like the ruffles, the accordion pleats in the cupcake paper. And I'm gonna keep, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna keep the razor blade in line with the mandrel. So you don't wanna be cutting out of line. This'll keep it 
they're, they'll all be parallel when they're all lined up. And when I push it down, I'm going to be pushing in at an angle. So I'm going to match that angle on the cupcake paper. And it's very quick. So I just heat one area. And press down. And you can see it stays right in line. It goes from the bottom to the top. And this can go very quickly once you get it down. So I'm gonna turn that slice towards me. Here again, I can see what I've sliced and where I'm gonna put the next slice. So you don't turn it away from you to do the next slice. So the first slice is done. I heat it again, a little bit left to right, and press. Heat it and press. And I'm pushing pretty good. This uh, smaller mandrel is bending a little. So I'm really getting in there. Okay, so if I've gotten the bead a little too hot or pushed a little too much or for whatever reason that bottom isn't level anymore, I can heat it just a little without melting the slices in and just even it up with the bottom of the knife so it's nice and flat. So keeping the bead warm, let's put, this will be like almond flavored ice cream because it's dark ivory and it flows really nicely. So I'm gonna lay the dark ivory down right here, right next to that green. You don't wanna put it way out here, you'll be too far away. And if you have trouble trapping air bubbles, you don't necessarily want to touch this when putting on the ivory. You might catch an air bubble. So here again, it's like everything else with lamp work. PPP, practice, practice, practice. But there are a couple little tricks I can show you. You can start off with a small gather and add that very close turning the mandrel away from you, which pulls that glass from the rod. And then you can build on that. So I'm very close. Touching down and pulling it, stretching that hot glass so it doesn't make as fat a bead as it does make um, a disc bead. So now I'll melt it in and it, you'll see that bagel shape come and it should make it touch the green cupcake paper. And, and that's pretty good. It did touch. If it doesn't, you can always hold it vertically for just a sec and you'll see that glass for the cake part touch the paper part and be nice and secure. So I'm adding another room, uh, ring. It's like encasing. If I want it a little bit fatter, I could come in at an angle and add a little glass Kind of like doing a sewing machine motion up and down, up and down, up and down without touching the mandrel, which I just did. So that'll be a good way to show you how to cover something up. Sometimes I think when you make an error, if you know how to fix it, you learn even more about the process. So now I'm just keeping the heat on the cupcake part the cake part of the cupcake and making that round. So it's nice and round. I'm just gonna heat the mandrel on this side, which will keep the cupcake paper part nice and warm. Okay, so now I'm ready to put the ruffle on the cake part. And I'm gonna make a wrap just to the left of the center of this dark ivory. So I'm gonna lay it down right here, not touching, not touching the paper part. 
because what's this going to, this is going to be kind of like a Saturn ring around the dark ivory. It's going to create the ruffle. Stretching out that gather and hopefully making it all the way around. Then I can continue to add by doing that same old sewing machine motion. It's gonna build up that wrap, kind of like a Saturn ring. You can see it's just left of center of the paper part. And it's not particularly even, which is fine, because ruffles on a cupcake, unless you get them from the bakery, <laughs> are not exactly perfect. I'm gonna add a little bit more. So you can see it's standing out a good bit from the bead. Let me heat this up a little bit. Now I'm gonna use this little tool and make a pushing motion from right to left, which is gonna create that Saturn ring to make a ruffle. If you don't have one of these, you can use a mandrel to get the same effect. So now I'm gonna give it some, let's get rid of that little point right there. So I'm gonna give it some heat underneath the ruffle. and then focus on the top and just give a little push. Give another little push. And when I push this down, I may push it at an angle going down, an angle going up, just to give a little variation on this ruffled edge. Oops, didn't get it quite hot enough. Just go back and heat again and push again. So depending on the size of your whole cupcake, you may get uh, one, two, three, four, five. I got five little ruffled pushes. You may get six if it's larger. So basically that's what the cupcake construction is. And you can decorate this a number of different ways. I'll show you some samples when I finish this one. But because I touched the bead release up here, there's a little sharp edge. So one thing you can do is make a cherry on top and that's going to cover up that little sharp point. Unless you wanna file it off, um, it's up to you. So just a just a thin rod of red. And I'm going to wrap around probably one time. Maybe I need a little bit more right here. There we go. I'm going to tweak it just a little bit, make that cherry look good sitting on top. So sometimes when you're making this bead and you've got the ruffled cupcake paper, uh, paper on one side and you've added the cake part and it's not touching, you can heat the cake part and hold it vertically. But if you've been really far away, you'll get a more of a, a point to the cupcake cake part. And you don't really want that point. So this is another way to cover up if you've got a pointy top. So there is a cupcake, an almond flavored cupcake with a cherry on top.
and there's several different ways. Let me put this in the kiln. Several different ways to finish them. So here's a, a lemon cupcake. So you choose the colors of your cupcake by the flavor of the cake. So that one's got a cherry on top. Here's one that's like a chocolate ripple. And that was just made by making a fat twisty out of a dark, dark brown and white. Here's a fancy one with little like roses on the top. Here's another one with flowers, daisies. And this was a white top that I encased in a transparent color. So that's another option. You don't always have to put dots on the paper part. You can put, uh, this is just a circle wrap of, I think a green twisty. Here is an encased cupcake paper, white base, turquoise encasement with a zigzag of a white stringer. And the top hopefully looks like chocolate syrup. Here's the sprinkles. That's a white base with a cobalt encasement for the cupcake paper. And some random color on top. It was a mismarked short I had. But there's the sprinkles on top. And I made a Halloween one. So green and orange with some black dots. That gives you some options. So I hope that's helped everybody. Thanks for looking. I hope to see you again. Bye.